article that you just placed on uh, the SNRD Africa website, uh, it was all about resilience and that it is used as a buzzword too often and the concept is not really reflected enough in terms of actual application in projects, even though it's, it's inserted into the, the project papers and applications all the time. Now tell me, why is resilience important? It's an in-depth ability of the community, of the household, of the family, of the of the also the nation, to you know to sustainably uh, improve their capacities on food and nutrition insecurity. For us, we mainly look at the uh, at the uh, from the lens of nutrition and food security. But resilience, as such, is a broader concept, which is which has like climatic resilience, resilience to climatic changes. Maybe you can give us a little bit of a background on the different levels of of resilience so that we can get a bit closer into it yeah resilience could be you know understood in different levels that when when there's a stressor or shocker to the to a community the stressor could be in terms of a climatic crisis like a drought or a flood or it could be an economic crisis that there is job loss in the community or it could be like a production crisis that we face Sometimes we face food crisis, we sometimes there's acute price rises. The resilience then acts at different levels. One, we call it as absorptive capacity of to deal or to enhance resilience, where you know where the communities or the households, how do they adapt to the to the to that stress? Like that immediate absorption of the stress. So like it could be like purchasing more food, it could be like you know some food processing thing, like which is local. Like in India, we saw that people kind of store their foods in a local way. We call it chutney. Like, you know, they, where they put the tomatoes, they dry it and put it in a, some preservative. They try, try to store it for, for the crisis period. So this uh, this could be like a, a absorptive capacity. And not, it, absorbs, absorptive could be positive as well as negative. So, so there could also be like that people reduce their food intake. Or people eat like rotten food. We also saw in one of our studies. Whereas we can also have a second level of resilience, which is adaptive capacity, where we see an incremental or a strategy, little bit of strategy to deal with the crisis. So it could also be like, uh, you know, promoting kitchen gardens, which is a very small time. Like it's a small homestead garden in rural communities, which we are also trying to promote in rural India and also in many other uh, programs uh, across the world, where you at least try to promote four or five, three or four vegetable plants in high stress situations, like which can grow with little care in, in drought, drought or which need little water. So this could be uh, one of the adaptive strategies, or it could be like uh, more on economical ground, it could be migration. Like we almost see a lot of migration in many of our rural areas during the lean season. Like uh, when when there is drought or when there is summer, when there is no water. So migration is also an adaptive kind of capacity where there is an incremental adoption by the community. And it could be in a broader way, it could be transformative where the government can play a role of improving the whole lot of things so as to bring it to a status where the resilience could be you know dealt in a much better way so some of the examples could be like seed banks like i can show you that this is one of the things that we kind of um, uh, promoting where there's a seed calendar where where we kind of uh, in one of our programs where we try to sh educate them on how to store seeds which stores which seeds are more good for which seasons when to sow them so it is a it's a, like, like a strategy to deal with this, um, with the crisis of food security. And it could also be like improving the subsidized uh, food grain distribution system, which we have in India. It's called public distribution system for vulnerable people. So this could also be like improving the coverage or having some water strategies like check dams. So these are some of the transformative strategies. Okay, there's a great new analytic framework to capture reality. And in a way, it's all just development as we always done it. How does the concept of uh, this, this new analytic concept really help you more to approach your, 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 your development work as if you would just do it the way you've done it 
you know, before. Resilience takes you through during the lean period, during the crisis period, the unforeseen crisis, unforeseen shocks, which you may see today or you may not see also. The community may not see also. So it prepares you. It gives you the strategies to deal with those stressors and shocks. I often see that women and children are like, um, are, they, they are uh, mostly facing the food crisis more. So resilience could be a strategy that, you know, different strategies, the combination of strategies, which could help these vulnerable groups to become more food secure. So now, Archana, you prepared also a, a study just uh, beginning of September, where you looked at some formative uh, research. Um, can you maybe just give us a little bit, uh, some detail of what this research was about and what came out of it? It's a brief assessment to understand like what are the resilience strategies, what are the stressors in, in our society, in our uh, project area, which is Shivpur. Shivpur is one of the most backward districts in Madhya Pradesh in India. And it's a mainly tribal state, tribal, it's, it's mainly inhabited by schedule, uh, scheduled tribes, which are known as the primitive people. There, the food habits are more traditional. There's a dependency on the forest food. And also the droughts and the terrain is very rocky there. So there is also additional water crisis also that, that the community faces. And uh, due to the remoteness of, uh, of this, we found that the, 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 the stresses are highly prevalent in this region. And so this study was done to understand what are the basic stressors and shocks for the community and, and which are the coping strategies. So it was a qualitative study where we interviewed few stakeholders, which are the government officials like district food officer, district food and uh, civil supply officer. We have this Ministry of Food and Public Distribution who, who distribute food grains, mainly rice and wheat, uh, to our vulnerable communities at a very subsidized rate. But since it's a very big hierarchical uh, and it's a very big layered ministry, sometimes the distribution is a problem and also efficiency is a problem. And we also spoke with our other minister, uh, our, our other counterpart, who, which is the Department of Women and Child Development and the district officials there. We spoke to Anganwari workers who are the frontline nutrition health workers. And we also spoke to our beneficiaries, the women in this age group. In terms of resilience and, and your study, were there any uh, findings on stresses that were not that obvious, uh, that are a bit counterintuitive, or did you find some strategies that are uh, that are very interesting, how people actually cope in a way that you haven't really expected? We found that uh, women had less, less access to food in the household, and some of the coping strategies that were there in, in, in this regard was that uh, in the absorptive category, we had like uh, people kind of shared food when there's a lean season or when there's a stressor was there. They had food preservation techniques, some of the local food preservation techniques, which were running through the uh, uh, generations. And uh, and then also like making pickles or making chutneys, which are not nutritionally that good, but still it provided them some food when the vegetables were almost not there. And then also, like, uh, since it's a tribal region and forest is nearby, although the forest is going down and down uh, in, the, in this region also, so we found that they also had a dependency towards forest food. And, you know, uh, promoting use of forest or local variant foods and vegetables could be an important adaptive, uh, absorptive strategy of the community, which we also promote, and we found that this was some of the strategies which the family kind of or the households kind of uh, normally uh, do when there is a crisis, when there is a lean season. We also found some negative strategies where was like there was stealing of the PDS food or ICDS food. PDS is this public distribution food. And we also have the food from it's called uh, uh, packed ration for the uh, women, pregnant women, and which is given by the Department of Women and Child. The adaptive strat strategies could be like the migration or could be the homestead garden that was developed, the dietary diversity knowledge that, that could be promoted or to them, improvement of PDS coverage, which was there when there's a drought, the government in increases the PDS coverage. 
and there were large transformative changes also which was like at the community level like more a lot of women went doing this small shop shops they opened their small shops which helped them in you know to mitigate the the stresses you mentioned that they make pickles or chutney and that might not be the the best way to do that that brought me to the to the idea well chutney tastes very well so there might be some strategies that are not that e effective in a way but they you know they appeal in a certain way because they they appeal to the taste or it's just the way it's do always been done you know the traditions sort of thing that might be in the way did you find that there are some strategies that are actually very effective or and or did you also find strategies that were very ineffective did you get any ideas on that and maybe how to deal with that from a project level with with this sort of thing they can use a uh, better techniques also for food preservation where the nutrients are stored or where the food can be prevented from rotting and secondly like uh, use of local food variants like you know uh, there are traditional like coarse seeds like uh, in uh, millets or bajra which were more nutritious but over the time that the, the, even the tribal peoples were not consuming it so improving these food practices which are tra which are traditional which could be easily available in that region and which can easily grow also in this region like some wild variants of vegetables and fruits these are very effective strategies we can always promote them in our project also in other projects also the government can also project uh, in, uh, promote them then the seed banking the seed banks the seed calendars storing of seeds using of homestead garden you mentioned already the 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 shocks that were that were um, experienced anything on that that was very very interesting to you we had floods where everything was overflowing there was no drinking water and also it was welcome for them because they had not seen rain for so many years uh, but uh, the community was totally unprepared the government was unprepared for floods our public distribution system is tr uh, trying to reach to every vulnerable community for subsidized food grains we still saw women who were excluded from the pds who were eligible but excluded Mm. and also so, stresses at family level were also, also there like women were getting less food children uh, did not had the complementary feeding and complementary food rations which they should be getting so i guess your your concept of resilience needs to look at being resilient to also stresses that are not that probable to happen yeah yeah when we talk about resilience we talk about foreseen and unforeseen stresses unforeseen shocks so for a community a community may have slowly got used to some kind of stresses uh, the resilience should address that regular stressor very well because that needs to needs uh, action or that needs uh, um, attention but we also should understand what are the not that regular crises both at the climate level both at the community level at the household level and also at the infrastructural level also well isn't that a bit difficult to um bring people to prepare for things that are in their in in, in their mind are not going to happen maybe in their lifetime they only happen in the old times like the floods maybe now so what, how do you how do you uh, deal with that as a project yes it is a little difficult to uh, we put people in the perspective of long term resilience or try dealing with crisis uh, and in the project we are trying to find out the strategies which could be easily adopted at the community level at the household level because uh, they are already in a kind of a crisis situation uh, most of them go for daily wage workers but also we try to work with the government at different levels mm -hmm. like seed banks like seed storage seed distribution or helping the family to to uh, to learn techniques of cooking which is more nutritious which is more local cuisine as are involved and which uh, using simple things like using uh, like moringa moringa leaves you can take an example moringa is a uh, plant which grows very commonly in many parts of india 
but the food habits did not include moringa so so far because the leaves taste little better bitter but in some of our cooking strategies what we did is that we tried to show them uh, differently cooking moringa leaves but it still adhered to their cooking style to the normal tests that they are used to and we saw a difference in the use of moringa leaves in the community because moringa in this in this region it doesn't need much time to grow also so where in the beginning we did not have any moringa leaves people consuming any moringa but now they it could be one of the resilience strategies just an example yeah so it seems as if there is sort of another fourth capacity i'm looking at your uh, chart there with the three capacities right now for me it seems there's another very important um maybe horizontal capacity that's sort of the the ability to change your behavior and that needs to be supported by the project behavior in terms of how you personally deal how you change your way to adapt to climate change how you actually are willing to take up different cooking techniques I, I don't want to confuse your concept but I think there's a this behavior change uh, capacity uh, seems to be quite important yeah behavior change is quite a broad concept and uh, what we i think we should look for is more specific areas of behavior which could be uh, addressed to easily like uh, we cannot change a lot in especially feeding behavior is a little difficult to change in communities I and mean, for us also it's difficult to change uh, but yes we can give some this additional things or uh try to promote which are the strategies which could be how do i say easily changed in the in their normal household practices if we want if we ask them to make little changes it may be possible but bigger changes is difficult to kind of attain so that the strategy should be like uh, making smaller changes in the habits so one of the strategies is that we are doing this um, group meetings and trainings of anganwadi workers so participatory learning and action which is called pla we have rounds of training for anganwadi workers which is very intensive for the anganwadi worker and they in turn train the women in a 20 structured sessions to improve their nutrition behavior good cooking practices feeding during pregnancy and the complementary feeding exclusive breastfeeding so these are the ways which could you know uh, strategize or we can see what are the incremental benefits of this action towards the components of resilience i mean we have to see how it addresses even during the crisis during the lean season in terms of your project work is there is there a means that you that you usually use that is that is working out very nicely Yeah uh we found that training of anganwadi workers is a strategy which should be built innovatively and a little thoughtfully because these are the last mile deliveries last mile delivery persons and they play an important role in improving both nutrition security food security and also in building the enhanced resilience also they would play an important role so like training it could be innovative and interesting so we have this pla trainings which are very intensive trainings for four days in after every six months and uh, which i think could increase their knowledge and also with the help of the department of women and child development uh, uh, in the government of madhya pradesh in india one of the state central states in india we also developed a online training platform for anganwadi workers which is a video based interactive Uh, training module for anganwadi workers for improving the nutrition of women and children what do you say to the projects in terms of how to actually implement resilience the project needs to evaluate the strategies understand if that if it is addressing resilience in this five frameworks which we also mentioned in the article and it's there very well there in the article and also somehow measure also resilience that how much it has improved in resilience there are many measurements of re- resilience and it's still developing in the context of food and nutrition security and there is a um, index called rima index this resilience index uh, measurement analytics so it's called rima index that is one of the ways you can measure resilience in your project 
And then there are other qualitative and quantitative ways to measure resilience. So approaching the framework and having something to measure resilience is important when, when we address resilience. So it is a step slightly different from food security and food and nutrition security only. I just need to thank you. That was great. So. Thank you.